Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're so glad that you tuned in today. It has been uh, refreshing and fun to be back and to just share with the people today. And I really do believe that um, before the program's over, you're going to be encouraged. And, uh, you know, it goes without saying that, of course, the enemy has been actively sowing seeds of prejudice and hate and bitterness and evil in the world. He's always done that. We really have seen it over the last couple of years. But to combat this, our Father instructs us to not be overcome by evil, but to overcome evil with good. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And our guest was a shining example of that. When in the midst of 2020 social chaos, he took a critical stand for Jesus instead of bowing his knee to man. Please welcome NBA basketball power, our player for the Orlando <laughs> Magic. He's powerful too. Jonathan Isaac and his pastor, Dr. Duron Hepburn. Thank you. Thank you Hello, so much. <laughs> all right. Well, so good to have you all here. Thank you. What a blessing. And, uh, you know, um, Jonathan, we like that name. My oldest is named Jonathan. There's a lot of Jonathans lot of in this Jonathan crew. You're married to Jonathan. I'm married to a Jonathan. gift of God. Mm -hmm. So, but um, it's really interesting to see what all the Lord has done with you. Uh, can we go back just a little bit and we'll, I'll, I'll, bring you into the story too, Pastor. Let's go back to, you grew up in church, right? Mm -hmm. And hearing about Jesus. And when did you get, when did you start playing basketball? And when did you take the growth spurt to be how tall? Seven foot now. Seven feet. Seven feet. But the growth spurt, well, the growing happened progressively. Okay. So not all at one time. I think I was six foot when I was a freshman in high school and then oh, wow. ended up when I was a senior as tall as I am now. Wow. But, but yeah, so I grew, I grew up in church. Um, my dad was a Holy Ghost roller. We were in church, felt like every day, memorizing scripts, whole psalms as little kids. Yeah. Um, but it was always more so a tradition for me. I didn't understand the reality of a relationship with Jesus and what that actually looked like. And it wasn't until I got drafted in the NBA, uh, moved to Orlando and... You were a first round down. draft pick. Yes, ma'am. Are y'all proud of me that I knew that? <laughs> Hopefully I read that. What number? It. Six. Hey, yes. Hey, hey. <laughs> For the Orlando Magic, and um, that's amazing. And so you are here, you're headed into a, an amazing career, mm -hmm. but you really don't have that personal relationship with the Lord. Is that right? Here's some, wait, show that again, Lane. I didn't see that. There, you, you're going to see him in action. See Jonathan, right? Bam, bam, and bam. Okay. All right. So I played basketball too, but nice. anyway, that was a long time ago. But um, <laughs> so... Um, Something happened there in, when there was an intersection where that changed, your heart changed. Uh, go back and tell us that story, how it happened. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of foundation um, about me. Like when, when I started coming up, I moved from Bronx, New York to Naples, Florida when I was 10. So I went from a very predominantly black community to a, to a white community. Yeah. And I really struggled with fitting in and making friends. Yeah. My nickname was Ethiopia. Oh. And so during that time, I quickly developed a sense of insecurity and yeah. anxiety. And that led to being good at basketball because the better that I got at basketball, the more friends that I made, the more girls wanted to hang out with me. And so yeah. that's, I put everything I had into basketball, but I had this behind the scenes fear of losing it all. And so if I played well, everything would go great. If I didn't play well, I felt like I'd lose it all. And so yeah. I was always in this limbo. Um, go to Florida State, I'm the number one player in the state of Florida, but nobody knows I'm on anxiety medication. And fast forward, I get drafted to the NBA. I'm the sixth pick. And I meet this guy on an elevator. And he stops me and says, I can tell you how to be great. And I said, how? He said, you have to know Jesus. And I'm like, man, I know Jesus. I know I'm a Christian. Um, I but grew I, up in church. Yes, I, I grew up in church. Lingo. I'm a Christian. Yeah. But I, I wasn't living that you way. You didn't know he was a pastor, though. No, not at all. Okay. I never said it. Okay, so Pastor Hepburn, did you know who he was? No, not a clue. I, I didn't have a clue. I saw him, and I thought he played basketball overseas. I'm not a basketball fan, per se. I like track and field. Yeah. So I didn't know but he But now you're basketball. a basketball fan. Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what made you say something to him on the elevator? Because, you know, this is a discussion I had with my husband, Doug, over the weekend. We were just talking about being intentional where mm. we are, like with the people that we're surrounded by every day. Think about if all of us would be obedient mm -hmm. to just speak life. In fact, I mean to tell you, and I'll get back to your story. No. So we're at the beach, and the guy that puts the chairs out, he was his last day of working there, 
And as I was walking back to our place, and he had put our chairs out every day, he, he said he was going, this was his last day, and he was going back to college as a junior. And the Lord was like, pray for him. And so I just stopped him right there in the hot sun, and I said, is there anything I can pray with you about? And he said, yes. And just, I prayed for his, his year of school. I asked him, did he know Jesus? He said he did. And I had a good prayer with him. Then he hugged me right on the beach, and I was just like, what if we were that sensitive to the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So, okay, so get back. So you're at the elevator. Yes, I and always try to evangelize. Yeah. I always try to tell people, I believe that we know God. God brings the greatness out of us. Yeah. So it was easy to say that to him. So what did you think when he said that? You're like, who is this guy? Yeah, I, I just thought, okay, yeah, and I know Jesus. I was very suspicious, just, you know, yeah. what, who is he? What does he want? And uh, I kept seeing him all the time. Now, why, why, how did that happen? How did y'all get We lived in the same building. Mm -hmm. Oh. And we kept crossing each other's path. Okay. But Jonathan wasn't giving me the time of day. <laughs> he was not giving you not the time, the time, of, time of day. Jonathan. Well, not Jonathan. Yeah, not the time okay, of day. Okay, so were you married at this point? No. Okay, you no, weren't no, married. No, well, she gets into it in just a minute. So yes. stay tuned for that because she's a beautiful girl. Yes. Okay, so um, then what happens? So I, I keep seeing him. Um, and then finally, he asked me to go to lunch. And I'm seeing him so much, I'm finally saying, look, if I see you one more time, I will go to lunch with you. And I think it was like a few days later, I see him and like, let's go. So we go to lunch. Tell him how that happened. Tell him how that happened. How we saw each other again. That's interesting. Yeah, it was in the, it was in the parking lot. Yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah, the parking lot. Okay, so <laughs> fast forward a little bit. And also, everything is in the book. So I know we got to kind of fast forward a little yes, bit. Yes. but. And the name of the book is? Why I Stand. Why I Stand, Jonathan Isaac. Here it is right here, folks. And you tell the whole story. Okay, in the parking lot. <laughs> yes. So fast forward, um, I went to a movie uh, with an old trainer of mine, and we went to see a Christian movie. The movie was terrible. <laughs> I jumped from the movie to that movie to Thor. And then uh, <laughs> we finished. So we're at the movie theaters for like four hours now. I leave. He asks me, where am I at with God? I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm searching. I'm trying to figure things out. I go to leave, and I'm turning down this street, and there's a car that's turning onto the street that I'm turning off of. And our cars kind of meet like that. And I look, and he looks at me, and it's him. So we, we both wrote on the window, and I'm thinking to myself, I was just talking about God. Like, God wants this guy in my life. I don't understand how or why. Yeah. And so I tell him, like, you and me, we're going to breakfast tomorrow. We go to breakfast. Fast forward. I'm telling him about this grand idea that I have. I'm trying to show off how Christian I am, that I'm going to feed the homeless and with burgers and, and hot dogs. He yeah. tells me, you can't do that. If you're going to feed people, you have to feed people correctly. And so he has a catering company. He tells me this. I, he says, if you buy the food, I'll have my people cook it, and we'll do the whole thing for the homeless. Again, fast forward. I'm following him to Sam's Club, and I'm saying to myself, what are you doing? Who is this guy? You have no idea. Yeah. Follow him to Sam's Club. I buy the food. Some people come and grab it. Fast forward a few days later, I get a text message with an address. I go to the address. There's a line of 200 homeless I people. I just, also he said, I just fed this man and his family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say that, I, I said that to myself after everybody left. I'm like, I'm never going to see this guy again. I just fed his family for a year. <laughs> and so, uh, so I get to the spot. There's a line of homeless people, just people wanting to eat. I jump in line, put my hair in it on. There's a young lady that's standing next to me that's also feeding people, and she's my wife today. Aww. And so I met her, I, I meet her there. That. Yes. So I meet, I'm just I meet glad her there. you're obedient. You could have missed out. I mean, there are so I many times God is opening a door and you know that you're supposed to go through it. Mm -hmm. and, and you just hesitate. But on the other side of that obedience, sometimes God has a blessing. So Amen. be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the lady, the girl next to you, okay, we want to hear more of that story, don't we? Yeah. Okay, so she's standing next to you. You had to notice she's beautiful, right? Yes, I did notice. And so, and she, did she know who you were? No, I think, I think I, we introduced ourselves just, I think Doc, once I got there, but he was like, you know, everybody, this is Jonathan. You know, he's the one who bought the food. He's going to be putting this thing on. And I just got to socialize with everybody that way. Yeah. Did, were, did some of the other players get involved? In no, no, it was, it was just, it was just, just, just uh, us. Just you. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, um, Pastor, you had a plan of knowing where the people that needed food were Absolutely. versus just going out and saying, okay, here's a hamburger to the homeless that right. are sitting out. You wanted to be more structured. Yes, yes. And that probably meant a lot to you when you saw, hey, this is really meeting a need. Yes, I saw that it was real. Um, yeah. And seeing the people there, seeing the people eating, and seeing the group of people that were putting it on, it touched mm -hmm. me. And after, I think I was injured at the time, I had hurt my ankle, and we went inside of what looked like a church, and they prayed over me and my ankle, and I just remember thinking that God is real, that all of yeah. this is orchestrated yeah. in some way, and that night I, like, I gave my life to Christ. 
Oh, that's awesome. So what did that look like and feel like? Because here you heard about the Lord, you knew mm-hmm. about the Lord, and pastor didn't tell you he was the pastor right. for the very reason, I guess, that the Lord showed you you needed to show him that you were authentic. Exactly. Because exactly. you had probably seen a lot of stuff, right? A thousand percent. I had yeah. already had a, a whole preconceived, preconceived idea. idea and notion about church and pastors and everything just come being in the league and being around people. And uh, yeah, it was it was just, I could tell for me again, going back to the beginning of struggling with yeah. love, always working for love and trying my best mm-hmm. to, to buy the love of people in a perform. sense, I have to play well to yeah. perform for love. And it wasn't until going through this moment of being like, God loves me. Like he's orchestrating my footsteps and I'm not really even checking for him. Yeah. And that was the thing that brought me. And then the more that I started to come to the church, and that's funny too. Once I got to the church, he invited me. And, and I said to him, if you're cool, your pastor has to be cool. And so I go to the church to introduce the pastor and it's him. <laughs> Were you I shocked? Out, I was shocked. Oh my gosh. And so I kept going and I just started growing. And I just yeah. began yeah. to I love the name close. of the church. It's yeah. JUMP and it stands for... Joyously Unveiling the Master's Plan. I love that. Romans 8 and 19. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to standing in the line fitting the homeless. <laughs> With a pretty girl next to you. Was she a part of your church? She was a part of my church for about 12 years. Oh, yeah. wow. And when she came, I told her, I said, you're going to marry an NBA player. Long I before spoke I got there. Long before he got there, 12 years. Okay, so you're standing there, and what, what how did the conversation ensue? There really wasn't any. It okay. was just, it, 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 it wasn't like we just kind of hit it off right then and there. It was a very slow progression of us actually getting to know each other really in prayer. Yeah. What started happening was he invited me to have early morning prayer at the church. I started coming, and she would always be there praying, and that's how we started to get to Was that other. different from the way you had had other relationships? One thousand percent. Very early on for me, it was like, you know, she ain't really checking for me. I ain't checking for her. But the more that I began to grow, the more attractive she became to me. Yeah. It was like this. This is this is the spirit of a woman that that honors God, that honors a leader, that knows how to work yeah. in the house of the God of house of the Lord. And then that's how we kind of... And that's what you wanted. Amen. Because that's what you would need for what God had for you to do. Yes, He's given you this huge platform. But so many times I see celebrities and stars, and I've interviewed so many over the last 35 years, and um, but they won't have that foundation right. or a church or a pastor or accountability. Right. And they shoot up, and then we lose them that's along right. the way. And that's you right. didn't want to see that happen with No, him, did I didn't you? want to see that happen. I, 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 what, what happened was, was key for me was keeping Jonathan at the altar. Prayer was very essential. So I knew if I could get that spiritual, that prayer foundation, that he would be okay. Mm-hmm. So how soon did y'all get married after that initial meeting? I think a year. I think we were, I think we were friends for a year, dated for a year, engaged for a year. And got married. Wow, yeah. Jonathan, yeah. that's a long time to wait. <laughs> no, it was. Of your it, life. it felt like it was quick. It did. Like friends, friends for a year, and then once we were friends, I said, "You know what? Yeah. I, I well, let's show the picture you. again. Me and Becca want to see it, right? <laughs> there she is. <laughs> and now, do y'all have any children yet? Yes, okay. one baby girl. Aww. She's three months old. One baby girl. I oh, so you're that. like in the beginning. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. How are you getting any sleep? I'm doing okay. <laughs> your wife. She's a trooper. Yeah. She's been holding it down. Good for her. So yes. how old is the baby now? Three months. Oh, so that's just like Noah, Rachel's yeah. baby. Yeah. I want to know about what, how did you grow? Because people talk about, oh, I grew, but a lot of people don't know what that looks like practically mm. in your day-to-day life. Yes, I would say, I would say the word. I would say getting around people who are actually striving and, 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 and in church, I started to want to honor God in my everyday life. And so it was like, practically it was deleting phone numbers, unfollowing people on Instagram, stop going to certain places that I was going before. And the more that I started to institute, institute those, those practices and just being under the word continually, the more I started to say, I want to honor God with my life. Yeah. So one of my questions is, you had had this correlation between performing for love mm-hmm. and it was producing anxiety in your life. And clearly you had a breakthrough because for you to be able to stand when you did, that was probably feeling the most pressure of rejection Absolutely. and such a hot pressure cooker moment. So how did you get that breakthrough? Well, that's, that's one of the things that I think stands out in the book for me the most mm-hmm. was that it's a reality of a true transformation um, and a progression and something that I'm still working at today. But it was, again, having somebody in my life to, one, speak into my life, offer that accountability, and to teach me how to speak back to the enemy. And not just that, I challenged Jonathan too, in the early stages. 
I challenged him to speak. Right, yes. I said, he, he kept telling me, I, feel, I was in the mirror preaching this message. I said, God is turning you up to preach a word. Yeah. And I challenged him to speak. And I, when, he, when he said, he, he finally got him to speak. I said, invite your friends. So God was teaching him how to stand behind the scene. Yeah. He, was, he was already building him for what was coming. So that's when he so spoke, that, yeah, that's what he was doing. So when he spoke, he was ready. And so what happened with the anxiety, with the word coming in? What happens, I started to learn how to fight back and yeah. battle it. So it wasn't something that goes away immediately. It's still something that I'm working at today, but I've learned the weapons, uh, like, you know, the weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but using the word to speak back. I am who God says I am. I am strong. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and allowing that to speak back to the lies of the enemy. So um, you've got a new clothing line coming out. In fact, uh, in Jonathan Isaac's new venture, he's inspiring us to think <laughs> about what true greatness is along with the values that embody it. Now, before we go to this, let me see the shoe right here. Yes, yes. Rebecca, you're going to love this right here. Here's part of the, the line is a shoe. It's got a verse on the back. Look, this is so cool. And then it's got Judah on the I side. I love it. Because your name is Jonathan Judah. Isaac, yes, ma'am. Jonathan Judah. I, I mean, and has can, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Has the lion yes. of the tribe of Judah. On What's the, the verse? Romans eight thirty seven. We are more than conquerors. We are more than in Christ conquerors. Jesus. In but Christ Jesus. Everyone has a different verse. Yes. So there's really? five. There's five colorways. Each colorway has a different verse. That's kind of goes with the title. So this title of the shoe is called Unconquered. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, wow. <clears throat> and the other interesting thing, before we go to that roll in, is. <clears throat> When everybody was pressuring you um, to take a knee during the national anthem, you made the decision not to. Why? For me, I, I didn't want to align myself with the Black Lives Matter movement or organization. Um, not that I didn't believe that Black Lives Matter, of course I do. Yeah. Um, I wanted to offer a solution that I felt could truly get to the heart of the problem um, and address not just racism, but all the things that plague our society. And so for me, it was about how can I step into this moment and just offer a different perspective? And so I said to my teammates, we had a team only meeting afterwards. And I said to them, look, um, you guys made your decision to kneel and allow me to make my decision to stand. And I was actually on the phone with in my pastor the night before. And I was telling him, I don't think you understand how crazy this is going to be. Yeah. I'm going to be name called. This is, I hadn't signed my contract yet. I was up for an extension. You got to hear that now. He didn't sign his contract yet. And they were canceling people. So I was up key. for an extension. And he said to me, you cannot stand for God and God not stand for you. Oh. And that was like the, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go through with it. You yeah. cannot stand for God and God not stand for you. And we've seen that happen at Daystar, just to develop a whole new audience and to just grow when everyone else was being shut down. To God be the glory for that because Amen. he stands on the side of truth. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at this new uh, venture that Jonathan's doing. True greatness is a lifestyle. It's working hard every day to be the best you can be for yourself, your teammates, your family. It's integrity. It's standing up for what you believe in, even when you stand alone. It's dreaming of a better world and doing what you can to make that dream a reality. It's performance with a purpose. It's rising above the negativity with love, spreading joy, lifting others up. It's celebrating faith, family, and freedom, and honoring the dignity of those who disagree. It's having principles and striving to live by them. It's walking the walk, wearing your values on your sleeve. True greatness is a movement, one that starts with you and ends with us. Unite us. All right, Unite us, and there's a, the logo actually has a little, uh, if you will, mirroring of the Ark of the Covenant, right? With the, yes, the angel wings coming Absolutely. around. And um, what other kind of 
products are you going to have in there? So we're starting with just Leisure Wear just to start. So we launched this Saturday. Okay. So we're officially launched. You can head to. So you're starting with this. No, just the Leisure Wear. So oh, just this, the Leisure Wear. The sneakers are actually going to be I available. I want the sneakers, though. <laughs> <laughs> the sneakers are going to be available closer to September, mid to late September. Okay, late September. And so you can head to weareunitis.com to check out the Leisure Wear drop that we did. And we're working on sportswear right now. That'd be great. And what a great message behind all of that. And I want to just say kudos to you, Pastor. To God be the glory. For um, loving him and mentoring him, but at the same time, not taking advantage of his fame or Amen. his fortune. I, I really, I don't know, while I was sitting there, I felt like the Lord said there are pastors and people of influence that, um, that are watching that God is going to send um, people across your path that have huge platforms and God wants to use you to be a blessing to them. Mm -hmm. But for you to be found faithful and not take advantage sure. of, of what you can get from them, but what you can give to them and, and how you can be a blessing. And how important is that if for, for people in ministry? I think that, that God has even manifested that to Jonathan. God has showed Jonathan that God wasn't trying to take anything from you. He was trying to get something to you. Yeah. And the book has been published. It's a bestseller. And also the clothing line. And people have been talking to Jonathan about maybe turning the book into a movie. Yeah. So because of his faithfulness, he's seen that if I stand for God, God stood for me. So he's seen if I listen to the word, submit myself, what God can do. Yeah. And, you know, um, I just want to encourage those of you as you hear about uh, Jonathan's uh, clothing line coming out, the sneakers that will be coming out, Unite Us. It's easy to remember. Um, stand with him Amen. because he is standing for truth.